Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. I'm your host Steve Coulter. As always, I'm joined on the couch with Sally Sanders here Good in our afternoon. Shelton Studios. We've got a great show. Uh, Fairfield has an environmental film festival that's going to be going on uh, starting today, actually, and going to Saturday. This is a busy weekend for people to be outdoors thinking about the yeah. environment. Yeah, and then if you're, once you're done with the films, you can go buy flowers for mom. We're going to do a segment on that later in the show. But to start off with, we're going to do our kind of uh, weekly film segment. And uh, Mothers. we're not going to do Cinco de Mayo. We're not going to do the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> so sorry uh, to Alfonso Cuaron and, and Seabiscuit and whoever else is getting kind of... Uh, shelved this week but we're going to do mothers our favorite mothers in movies and it's appropriate because mother's day is sunday and uh there have been so many movies where mothers are the focus oh yeah and there's two more there's mother's day and i yes. just saw that there's i think one called mothers and sisters coming out ah this, this weekend so there's plenty of cash grabs going on for this holiday well yes take mom to a movie <laughs> yes okay you can so, literally see two in the theater so yeah you're going to be mark this week i'm going to be mark and the key ingredients to any uh, movie about a mother is you have to have a little mayhem in there you, i think of aaron brockovich i think of uh you know kind of the mother who has to juggle the responsibilities kramer versus kramer mm -hmm. so that it's not always you know the calm donna the reed smooth path. yes yeah. it's not mothers are not always just these the calm and angelic sometimes there's a lot of uh craziness you got to juggle a lot of responsibilities you see Patricia Arquette in Boyhood a couple years ago is the yeah. prime example of that mayhem and juggling the responsibilities of being a single mom in this modern age. And I, just, I thought she was perfect in that role. One she of my was. favorite uh, she was. movie mothers. The next one is morals. This is the, they are the centerpiece of the family. They're the spirit of the family. And um, usually you see this kind of in movies where the dynamic is that the father is kind of you know led astray and uh, the mother is kind of the moral epicenter of the family and she's the one that kind of reels him back in uh, to who he truly is and that's kind of you know how you see mothers function in some of these movies is that they're the moral center okay and then the last one is manners you gotta they're teaching everybody not only their kids but people around them how to act and how to be appropriate in the world right the and then world. of course the final one is the Meryl oh, Streep Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. I'm your host Steve Coulter. As always, I'm joined on the couch with Sally Sanders here Good in our afternoon. Shelton Studios. We've got a great show. Uh, Fairfield has an environmental film festival that's going to be going on uh, starting today, actually, and going to Saturday. This is a busy weekend for people to be outdoors thinking about the yeah. environment. Yeah, and then if you're, once you're done with the films, you can go buy flowers for mom. We're going to do a segment on that later in the show. But to start off with, we're going to do our kind of uh, weekly film segment. And uh, Mothers. we're not going to do Cinco de Mayo. We're not going to do the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> so sorry uh, to Alfonso Cuaron and, and Seabiscuit and whoever else is getting kind of... Uh, shelved this week but we're going to do mothers our favorite mothers in movies and it's appropriate because mother's day is sunday and uh there have been so many movies where mothers are the focus oh yeah and there's two more there's mother's day and i yes. just saw that there's i think one called mothers and sisters coming out ah this, this weekend so there's plenty of cash grabs going on for this holiday well yes take mom to a movie <laughs> yes 
Okay. <laughs> you can so literally see two in the theater. So yeah. you're going to be Mark this week. I'm going to be Mark. And the key ingredients to any uh, movie about a mother is you have to have a little mayhem in there. You, I think of Aaron Brockovich. I think of, uh, you know, kind of the mother who has to juggle the responsibilities, Kramer versus Kramer. Mm -hmm. So that it's not always, you know, the calm Donna Reed. Smooth path. Yes, yeah. it's not. Mothers are not always just these the calm and angelic. Sometimes there's a lot of uh, craziness. you got to juggle a lot of responsibilities. You see... Patricia Arquette in Boyhood a couple years ago is the yeah. prime example of that mayhem and juggling the responsibilities of being a single mom in this modern age. And I, just, I thought she was perfect in that role. One she of my was. favorite uh, she was. movie mothers. The next one is morals. This is the, they are the centerpiece of the family. They're the spirit of the family. And um, usually you see this kind of in movies where the dynamic is that the father is kind of you know led astray and uh, the mother is kind of the moral epicenter of the family and she's the one that kind of reels him back in uh, to who he truly is and that's kind of you know how you see mothers function in some of these movies is that they're the moral center okay and then the last one is manners you gotta they're teaching everybody not only their kids but people around them how to act and how to be appropriate in the world right in the and then world. of course the final one is the Meryl oh, Streep going for yeah, four <laughs> going for four well we have to for Mark Meryl Streep we have to mention her she's kind of a staple of the genre yeah, she's, she's Sophia's Choice there's plenty of them Kramer versus Kramer like I just said yeah yeah and she is Mark Schumann our real dad's favorite. absolute favorite yep. actress so I wonder if she has anything going Mark. coming out this year uh, yes, she does. I can't tell you the name of it, but uh, I think she's got something coming out, say, in August. Okay. Yeah, and I can't even remember what it's about. Yeah, she's always busy. So what, what are some of your favorites? I know you've got a few classic roles. Uh... I do have some classics. I think when anybody thinks about um, movies about mothers, they think of, if you're going back, you go to Stella Dallas. Oh, yeah. And you go to Mildred Pierce. Those are the two. Mildred Pierce, yeah, that's like the staple. Yeah, and that Mildred Pierce was Joan Crawford right. playing a, a very self-sacrificing um, yeah, mother of, a, of a, just a horrendous daughter, a, a <laughs> devil seed. Um, Is she worse than Lolita or were, no? <laughs> well, manners were not taught in this family. This, this girl was, was indulged beyond anything, and it turned out badly for everyone. Um, but the, the kind of the flip to that, of course, is Mommy Dearest, in which Faye Dunaway plays Joan Crawford right. in real life. And uh, another over-the-top movie, um, Faye Dunaway just goes She's so good. Full, full crazy with, right. with um, you know, the famous wire hanger scene, I guess, is the one that everyone thinks of. One of the most iconic ones, yeah. Um, and speaking of, of uh, mayhem, I guess. Um, <laughs> There's plenty of those. Angela Lansbury in the Manchurian Candidate. Yes, that's a very good I one. Mean, I saw that. Yeah, talk about evil. Yeah. And and uh, there she is. Yes. yes. Duplicitous is Duplicitous. a good. Yeah. So the face on her and and the way she manipulates of people is just All right outstanding. I guess I went a little softer here. My first one was. Uh, Mrs. Gump from Forrest Gump. Sally Fields. Sally Fields, Fields yeah. yes. And I was going back and I was stunned. I couldn't believe she didn't win the Oscar for that role. She delivers one of the most famous lines in movie history. No Oscar, no nothing. Yeah. If that's not a great iconic mother role, I don't know what is. Well, she also had the mother role in Places in the yes. Heart, which was another She should be the Meryl Streep of... Uh, she sort of is the yeah, Meryl she's, Streep of mother movies. And she's in TV. We're going to get to that in a second with yeah. TV mother. She's in Brothers and Sisters. She's the matriarch. It's, it's also an interesting um, trope, the uh, women, actress, women actors playing mothers of men who are yep. clearly almost their peers, like yeah. um, Jesse Royce Landis was... Oh, Sally Harry Field, I think, was a year older than Tom Hanks. No, she then. was actually 10, she's 10 years older than Tom okay. Hanks. But Jesse Royce Landis was eight years older than Cary Grant in North by Northwest. <laughs> so, you know, it's... it's Hollywood, of, that crazy beast. Kind of unfair. <laughs> that industry yeah, that we and, can't get away from. And, and one of my favorite mother roles is, of course, Psycho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, is the warning is if, if I tell you who the mother is, <laughs> right. then I've spoiled it's the It's Anthony film. Perkins. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, she's definitely one of them. I, I mentioned uh, Donna Reed as kind of uh, Mary Hatch in It's a Wonderful Life. She's, yes. She's one that comes to mind for sure uh, when I think of kind of just the great mother and no mayhem in this role, but a little bit at the end where she's got to do a lot of juggling and uh, she's got to raise the money for George when he is uh, suicidal there at the end of the bridge. Yeah. But a great role nonetheless, and one and of my all-time favorites. And of course, segueing into the Donna Reed show on TV. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, she went from... Fr on, I, on film to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing... That was really the manners mother, I think, of, of all of the 
you know, just keeping charge of the family and getting everyone in line. And then there's the, the more modern day mother, which is like the action hero mother. I know. I think you wanted oh. to talk about Sarah Connor. Sarah in Connor. Uh, yeah, I mean that was that was the film role that every. Gave Is there every, a more strong mother? Yeah. Yeah. Every woman that. wanted to go out and lift weights and and, <laughs> yeah. and buff up her arms. Look at those seeing, glasses. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's a tough lady. They just in that exude one. power. And it's also you know it's mother love. She's protecting her child. Oh, of course. You know, and and that comes up a lot in films. Um, I was thinking about uh, how green was my valley, which is another. You oh, know, classic. Mother's Day Sobber, yep. and Sarah Allgood in that, who has the most wonderful face. Um, she's the mother of a, a whole raft of Welsh miners, and um, Roddy McDowell plays the youngest child, who's I think still in grade school then. Um, and she's got to be a little bit discipli uh, disciplinarian, right? Oh, well, right? She's, she's a disciplinarian, but she's also dealing with brawling uh, big boys and, right. and uh, getting Roddy off to school and feeding everyone. And it's packing. not an easy life being a mother. No, it is not. Another one I had was Aurora Greenway from uh, Terms of Endearment. Yeah. That's a classic role. Shirley MacLaine won the Oscar, I believe, in 83 for it. With Deborah Winger. Deborah Winger. Uh, Jack Nicholson. J Jack Nicholson and uh, Jeff Daniels yeah. as the husband who cheats. and then uh, She has that great scene with Jeff Daniels in the, ho in the hospital. It's one of my favorites. Where she's like, get the heck out of here. And yeah. she's also great with Jack, of course. Yes. Those scenes are yes. unbeatable. Um, I had another, um, if we, I, I had a list of what I called um, tragic moms. Okay. Okay, and Meryl Streep obviously she, falls into yeah, that was with Sophie's say. Choice. But um, Cicely Tyson in Sounder, which was one of my kids' favorite I don't think films. I've ever seen that one. It's, it's about a, a poor sharecropping family, black, in, in the South in, I think, the 50s. And the husband is arrested for uh, theft and sent away to jail and it's how Cicely Tyson keeps a family together on a on a, a farm where they're really not even subsistence farming and supports her oldest son who wants to learn to read oh, which wow. is not an option yeah. where they're living and in Sound that day and age it wasn't a given yeah and Sounders actually the name of the dog who was shot by the sheriff when he was arresting the father for protecting the father Sounder runs away and and the, the boy never gives hope that Sounder will come back. So it's just, it's a, it's a tear fest. Yeah, it's, I was going to say, it it's, sounds like a tear jerker. It's, it's a great film. It's <laughs> a great kid's book. I, I highly recommend it. Yeah. And Cicely Tyson is just the best. That sounds like a good and one. And Paul Winfield pay, plays the father. Father, and, right. And he's just as upright and righteous as you could get. Is there an uplifter on your list that's a little less sobby, or is there more tragic Oh, more sure. Tragic the month? kids are all right. Kids are all right. That's a good one. Yeah. Annette Benning and uh, Julianne Moore? Yes, yes. And if you want just silly fun, um, I recommend the first version of Hairspray. Oh, with yeah. With Divine as Edna Turnblad, <laughs> who makes a wonderful mom to Ricky Lake. Right. And my silly one was kind of Frances McDormand in Almost Famous. Oh, gosh. She's calling him on the yes. road. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. I, I love that role so much. And yes. she was so great in it. Helicopter mom before they were. Yeah. Uh, and then she yells to him, don't take drugs, <laughs> before the concert. I think it's, mothers have yelled that from him. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so, it's such a great role. And another Oscar snub. Uh, where was her Academy Award that year? Yeah. I yeah. guess she lost to Hilary Swank in Boys Don't Cry, so it happened. Well, that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah it's that, a tough one to overcome. That's a tough one to beat. Yeah. Was there any TV moms that you thought of uh, while we're on the subject of famous, <sighs> iconic moms? I had Carol Brady as one. Well, Barbara Billingsley, who was the mom in Leave it to Beaver, Oh, okay, yeah. And, and, I had her on my list, had, too, June. And had later fame as, uh, in the airplane movie. Yep. I Speak Jive. <laughs> yes. Um, she was great. And, and there was a little edge to her, you know, in, in that uh, she wasn't just, uh, although she did wear pearls and, and, and uh, rarely aprons, I think. She's, she was always cooking dinner wearing, you know, something that I would consider dress-up clothes. But uh, I liked her. The iconic 50s mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one I had was Carmela Soprano, four-time Emmy winner for uh, Edie Falco, one of the best roles I've ever seen. Yes. An actress performing, and uh, she really went toe-to-toe -to -toe with James Gandolfini. Yes, she did. I think she's kind of the definitive modern-day mother on TV. I also really enjoyed Floyd Gerhardt and Fargo this past year uh, as the kind of matriarch of the mob family. Yes. 
Yes, I thought she, she was, was a great character. She was frightening. <laughs> yes. And then we have one final mother to touch on, and it's Julia Roberts and Erin Brockovich, who I think is a perfect transition to our environmental film segment that we're going to yeah. have coming up after the break. Yeah, she, I mean, it, it, and it's, it's an example of mother love. You can, you can see this playing out again in, in Flint, Michigan. But, right. But she, she gets involved in, in finding out why there is all this pollution and doing something about it. And uh, she's an uneducated woman who, who just puts <laughs> her heart and soul into Such a great role. It is. It's, it's a wonderful film. Is it Aaron Eckerd who's the boyfriend? I know Albert Finney's in there too. Yeah. He, he plays like kind of the uh, the lawyer, right? Yeah. Yes. Great yeah. cast, good movie. Um, plenty of Mother's Day movies out there. There's yeah. so, there's so many of them. Watch them with your mom this week. Tell her how much you love her. Buy her some flowers. We'll tell you where to get them uh, in our Later third on segment. In the show, yes. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the Environmental Film Festival that's coming to Fairfield uh, Sacred Heart University this week. We'll be back after the first commercial break. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Connecticut is coming back to hometown banking, to a partner that makes small businesses feel big, where community comes first, where you get the know-how only neighbors can deliver, where saving time is important too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. With the 24-month Bankwell Smart CD, you can earn one and a quarter percent APY and raise your rate and add to your CD. Mosquitoes, ticks, gone. Guaranteed. That's what Mosquito Squad guarantees as America's most trusted mosquito and tick control company. Locally owned and operated, over 90,000 homes have been protected by Mosquito Squad using their dual protection method for season-long protection, which includes barrier spray service for eliminating mosquitoes and adult ticks, as well as supplemental programs to increase tick control. They use only USDA organic options, which are safe and non-toxic. Contact them today at www.squadctny.com or 203-893-4309. Mosquito Squad. No bugs, no bites, no kidding. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203 203- 273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. I'm joined here on the couch with Mary Hogue from uh, Fairfield Earth Day Committee. You've got the Environmental Film Festival coming yeah. up at Sacred Heart University starting tonight. First film debuts at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. tonight. We have a reception. So this is our first annual event. So we have a reception 6 to 7. The film is 7 to 8, and then we have and our it's, panel. Yeah, and then you got three more movies throughout the weekend. You've got a few uh, discussion panels as well throughout. Yep. A lot of fun activities for people to check out. How did this kind of uh, project come to be? Uh, when did it start, and who was involved? Well, we have a, a volunteer committee for Earth Day. Our theme is Make Every Day Earth Day, so we do things all year long. We coordinate with all sorts and collaborate with all sorts of people, and one of our uh, committee members, Sean O'Sullivan, go Sean, pulled this together. And uh, we got, she had a great panel of people screening the films. We had about 15 films that we all voted on. And uh, out of the 15, we ended up with four. And for each film, there is a panel discussion afterwards. And we did try to make sure that we had um, panelists in different areas of interest. So we, we have panelists that are advocates for the environment. We have uh, 
business people, we have people in the faith community, we have um, a high school senior who started an environmental program. Uh, we have state legislators. Our first selectman is moderating on Friday. I saw that. Yeah, that'll be cool. Very exciting. Um, we have Julie Balaga, who's on the, the Connecticut League of Conservation Voters with me. She um, she ran for governor for, of the state. She She's was, been active in politics for a long time. Yes, yeah, she was EPA Region 1 uh, manager, administrator. She was import-export bank director. So we have an amazing group of people with really a lot of depth, a lot of uh, different perspectives on how to view all sorts of topics. So I think it'll be really interesting. And there's a lot of topics. There's air pollution, water control, uh, yeah, and trash nuclear there. energy. Trash is a big one. Alternative <laughs> energy. Yeah, right. So yeah, and we have people that can address all these from different perspectives. And of course, people in the audience will be able to speak up. It's a small venue. It's the the wonderful new Martyr uh, Communication Center. Oh, at you're right. Heart. I didn't say that when I introduced you. Sorry, Martyr Center at Sacred Heart University. It's a beautiful venue. It's a, it's a very small, intimate setting, 110 max. Um, we're we're hoping it'll get filled because it's it's a nice, uh, intimate setting, so you can really get involved. It's um, right on the corner of Jefferson and Park Avenue. So I think the Google Maps. It's, it's 5151 Park Avenue, is that right? Well, that's the main address. So okay. I looked up. I think it's 5481. If you want to look 5481. up. 5481. If you want to look it up for your GPS. Yeah. yeah. That's always important. Yeah. So the first film, um, the opening night one, is the wisdom to survive, and that's about climate change. Yeah. I mean, they all address climate change to one degree or another, uh -huh. but this one does focus on it. And um, what's nice about it is it gives you. A background and an understanding of where, how we got where we are, but also an understanding of how we can make a difference and how we can positively move forward. It's it's not all depressing. And you know, if you want to go back to the Mother's Day theme, it's how to protect our Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. So, and that was I part like that of, way to tie it in. <laughs> yeah, and that was part of our thinking when we got um, onto this particular weekend. We were going to have films on Mother's Day, and we thought we'll let moms have their day. But, you know, take your mom to, uh, you know, a film about Mother Earth, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of our, our, our theme. Yeah, moms are concerned about what's going to happen to their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. So this is yeah. perfect. Yeah, the future definitely. of the planet is... So who's going to be talking about this film? Um, so, uh, well, all the information is on our website mm -hmm. for www. Uh, Plug away. FairfieldEarthDay.org, <laughs> and there's a film festival tab. And we loaded up all the panelists. So mm -hmm. we have up to, uh, we have a moderator for each night, and I think we have up to six panelists. So I wasn't going to list them all, uh -huh. but um, I just, I did think to highlight, you know, just the fact that we have that, that uh, sort of different facets to look at any particular topic. And the, the discussion isn't so much necessarily specifically the film, but just anything that is topical that might. Uh, be brought up because these films are sort of general. They can touch on any environmental issue, mm -hmm. um, including the community part of it, because we do all have to work together to, to make any positive change. Right, as global as it is in perspective, the, one of the goals is definitely to bring it back and tie it into the local community, what you can do here. Exactly. Right. And um, so it's really important that you know everybody feels that they can make a difference sort of give a yop, as Dr. Seuss would say. <laughs> Everyone, every little thing matters, and there's no right way to be doing a good thing. And that's really important from our perspective on the committee. You know, there's, if, if uh, you think it's better to recycle and I think it's better to get to LEDs, we're both helping the planet. And it really actually saves you money, it saves you time, it's so easy. So come and, and be with your fellow, you know, people interested in the environment and enjoy some films and some interesting discussions. Now Sacred Heart offered uh, help with the, is it the film program there? Yeah, they have. How are a, they involved? They're, the film director, Justin uh, Lieberman, is a, is a part of that program. And so he's put on film festivals before, so we couldn't have a better partner. Yeah. Got to um, lean on him a little bit. So he's been really helpful. He's got his graduate students helping us out. He got us the the location. Free labor. Yes, free <laughs> labor. And uh, yeah, we do a lot of free labor on our committee. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, the grad students. Are, we did a walkthrough on Monday, and uh, you know they really know what they're doing, and it's a really great program. They're also I think at Stanford as well. So it's a very robust program, and and it's really great to be able to be part of that whole program with them. 
so we appreciate all that they're doing for us. Now the Friday night film is This Changes Everything, is that correct? Mm -hmm. No, The Wisdom to Survive. No, Wisdom to Survive is tonight or? Yes. Okay, and That's then tonight. Friday night is? So Friday night at 7 is This Changes Everything, Saturday at 3 is Trashed, and uh, Saturday at 7 is A Fierce Green Fire, which I moderate. So I'm oh, very cool. The panels. Are you nervous at all or no? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing a great job here if it helps. You're, oh, getting, okay, you're getting good practice. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And now Trashed has Jeremy Irons in it, so people will see a familiar face when that one comes on. Yeah, you recognize the voice immediately. You, oh, yeah. I think you hear him before you see him. You see the, the trash. And um, that, that can be a little overwhelming, but there is, there is hope. That's really one of our, our themes when we were looking for films. We didn't want people to be too depressed because it, it is a big issue when they're all combined. But what we uh, have in these films is showing how people working in smaller communities are making a positive difference and they're building connections that they might not have made otherwise. And it's really exciting to be able to do that and to make those connections and, and uh, meet new people and, and learn new things. And that's what we're hoping the film festival will be for people who, who, join, who join us. I thought of Fear Screen Fire, which is the last one that's on Saturday, um, was very interesting. It, it does it in five acts. And mm. it starts out in the 60s with, with uh, sort of the first inklings of, of the environmental movement, mm -hmm. in a way, the talking about war resources. And then it moves on to um, the pollution of our atmosphere. And then it, another act is um, uh, energy resources and saving the rainforests, uh, but it, it sort of shows the progress we've made in, in our thinking, which is yes. one of the encouraging things I think you're, you're hoping to bring out. Yes, it's, I, I like that transition and sort of the contextual uh, way that it takes you from where we started to, uh, to realize what we were doing, Yeah, because we didn't know to start. Well, just to think about bald eagles these days. Yeah, I mean, you think about back in the '60s when when DDT was being sprayed everywhere, and yeah. and ospreys and eagles were just about gone around yeah. Connecticut. And now it's amazing. Yeah, well, our eagle festivals. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, and I also I just wanted to give a shout out because uh, Cindy Bigelow, who uh, demurred to be on one of our panels, but she's been a big supporter of the environment. This is Bigelow T. A uh, Bigelow T. Uh, Fairfielder through and through. Um, but she. Uh, came through with the, right from the beginning to be a sponsor, so along with Sacred Heart. We couldn't uh, pull this off without all that support that we're getting, so I just wanted to. A true community event. A true community event, yes. Kicks off tonight. Mary, thank you so much for joining us. The first ever film festival, environmental film festival at Sacred Heart University. We hope to have you back on the show next year when it's the second annual environmental Absolutely. film festival. We're going to go to a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about flowers and where to get them this weekend for your mom. Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. I think what makes ONS special is that it has everything that makes academic medicine great. We have the fellowship trained specialists, but we still bring the style and type of medicine that's indicative of a community practice. We are all trained in our area of interest and expertise, so our patients see a doctor who specializes in their particular injury. I did have two consults with major New York City hospitals, but I just felt that the care was best here. I was treated like a rock star. The surgery exceeded any expectations that I had. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203 
972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizik. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stamford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at triplesclean.com or 203-847-8000. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski. Join us for Coffee Break weekdays at 11 to get the latest Connecticut news, weather, high school sports, and more. News doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break on the HAN Network. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. Uh, in case you forgot, Sunday is Mother's Day, which don't means... Don't forget. Yeah, yes. don't forget. <laughs> There's plenty of uh, plant and flower sales that are going on in the local communities. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the Trumbull, uh, one, one in Trumbull at the Trumbull Agri-Science and Biotechnology Center. They are going to have a Mother's Day plant sale on Saturday, May 7th from 10 to 3. Plants are grown by the students there and the farm fair. Actually, uh, that's going on right now. Oh, okay. It started on Wednesday. All right, so through, Goes Saturday. through Saturday. There you yeah. go. There's going to have hay rides, sheep shearing, petting zoo, craft fairs, refreshments, and plenty more. That's located at uh, 536 Daniel Fa Daniels Farm Road next to the Hillcrest Middle School in Trumbull. That sounds like a great operation. Um, the longtime uh, Ballard Greenhouse plant sale in Ridgefield starts tomorrow morning at uh, 9 o'clock in Ballard Park, which is right off Main Street next to the CVS. And like most of the Garden Club plant sales, um, it'll have uh, plants that have been dug from members' gardens as well as uh, potted perennials, shrubs, annuals, herbs, kitchen garden plants, uh, gift baskets for Mother's Day and more. The greenhouse um, is the center of the, of the activity. There'll be plants laid out on, on the uh, grounds there, too. For information, visit BridgefieldGardenClub.com. Darien Community Association Plant Sale and Tea will take place at uh, 274 Middlesex Road in Darien, Friday, May 6th. The plant sale will be from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., um, and there's going to be a last booking at 2 p.m. The cost is $30. Reservations are can be booked at... 203-655-9050, and they are required. Yeah, that's for the tea, not for the plant yeah, sale. Yeah, for the tea, not for the buying of the plants, yeah. of course. Um, the Wilton Garden Club plant sale will be on Friday from noon to 6 and Saturday from 9 to noon at the Gazebo and Wilton Center. You can find out what they've got at wiltongardenclub.org. Milford Garden Club uh, is having their May Market plant sale. That starts Saturday at 8.30 uh, a.m. Uh, it's 11, it runs till... 11:30 a.m. It's going to include baked goods, a tag sale, homemade crafts, annual uh, annuals, and vegetables. Uh, there's going to be a show that's going to be taking place Saturday, uh, the seventh, as well as Sunday, May eighth, uh, in the historic downtown Green. There's going to be plenty of artists and crafts for people to look at. That's going to run um, from 10 to 5 on Saturday, as well as uh, what is it, 10 yep. to 4 on Sunday. Yep. Visit downtownmilford.org for more information. And the Long Hill Garden Club, which is in Trumbull, is going to have its plant sale on Saturday, May 7th from 8.30 to noon at the Trumbull Library, which is at 33 Quality Street. And they'll have hundreds of locally grown perennials, native plants, etc., 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 as well as Be Happy products. I assume those are... Uh, honey. Honey? Yeah, honey-based. Oh, yeah. Okay. And each plant's going to be tagged and... Uh, they'll be sorted by light requirements, which is really helpful for beginning gardeners. If you're in living in Easton, the Easton Garden Club uh, Garden Mart is going to be open Saturday from 9 to 1230 on the fire department green at One Center Road. Um, that is in Easton, and it's right next to Trumbull, where so plenty of yeah. sales going on. So if you're in the Norwalk area, Rowayton Gardeners Spring Plant and Tag Sale is going to be going on Saturday. 9 to noon at the potting shed behind the Rowayton Community Center, which is at 33 Highland Avenue. If we haven't given you enough options, the Redding Garden Club is going to have a plant sale Saturday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's taking place at Lone Town Farm. 
uh, within the Reading Historical Society, 43 Lone Town Road and Route 107. And for more information, go to ReddingGardenClub.org. And the Garden Education Center of Greenwich will have vendors for Garden and Home at its May Gardeners Market on Saturday from 9 to 4. You park at Coscob Elementary School and there will be a shuttle to the uh, Garden Center. And their website is gecgreenwich.org. One last one here, it's the Dogwood Festival. That's going to be happening at Greenfield Hill Congregational Church. It's the 81st Dogwood Festival. That's starting Friday, May 6 at 10 a.m. in Fairfield. The festival includes activities for all ages, including a Friday luncheon with a performance from uh, the Contemporary Ballet Company and the annual Dogwood Dash. There's going to be plenty of stuff going on there. 50 crafts, artisan and food booths. Vineyard Vines is going to have a collection of customized items in honor of the Dogwood Festival heritage. Hours are 9 a or 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Friday and noon to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. For more information, visit greenfieldhillchurch.com. Thank you so much for listening to the weekend segment. I know that was a long kind of a brush to the head there, but it was fun. And there's a lot of flowers to buy. A lot of flowers to buy. And it's very worthy of the other day. And uh, we're going to sign off. We'll be back on the couch next Thursday with more arts and leisure. Have a great day.